Hello and welcome back to Voxel Tycoon tutorial. So this is the second video. Uh, that means that the everything you see here was built in the first one. And if you haven't seen it, I recommend doing so to get to understand all the basic steps. Uh, and if you do, you can probably tag along anyway and, and keep up. So since last video, I have only enabled sheet mode and I got lots of money right now because we'll build stuff that we actually don't have access to just yet. But for demonstration purposes, like I did with the building and everything, just to show you how it works. So let's start with research. The labs, you build a lab, you can build it anywhere, and you can build it next to a resource deposit. You can build it somewhere in the center. So it's totally up to you. So let's start here and take a look at the lab and what we can do in it. So as you can see here, we have available in warehouses, nothing except for money. And so this means that we can only do research here that requires money and no resources. Luckily, we have one of those, manufacturing. It will take 20 days and it will cost us 63,000 euros. This will unlock conveyor belts and connectors and yeah, bridges and, and tunnels for conveyor belts. So let's do that. When, it, when research is running, it will run in segments. This specific one is divided into 20 segments and it will, each segment will cost 3,200. So this is pretty convenient because you don't need to pay everything at once. It will be spread out over the over 20 days in this case. But we can do more research. So if I build another lab over here. And let's take a look at what we can do as well. Because this is an iron mine. We will have iron ore here. And I know there are research that will that requires iron like the gasoline engine 2, for example. It will unlock new trucks for us and cost pretty much and uh, of money and some resources as well. So let's start that, but the problem is right now we have nothing. We have money, but no resources. So we can do this in different ways. In this case, I'll just set up an iron mine over here, which is in reach of here, this uh, laboratory. And we are good to go. So when we're running, this will fill up and you can see it in here as well, available in warehouses. We could have the station over here instead, and then we can have our train. Where is it? Here. Our train could go over here and dump some materials and then leave again. We would only need a warehouse close by and then everything would work well just as good as having it here. Having it this close to a mine might be okay, but eventually you might need this, this space for something else. You could also have a, a mine and then put a warehouse within reach and then have your laboratory a bit farther away. So either one of those will work just fine. So I will do like this. I will start another lab here doing the same thing because we have a research called steam engine it will unlock new trains and then we have these roads mining and rails we can't do any of those just yet so let's do coal now having three labs this early in the game that would probably never happen so this is only for the tutorial, of course. So what I'll do is that I will fast forward. I will do nothing else but just wait for the research to finish. You can see it's using up our resources down here. So this will be quickly. I'll be right back. And with that, our laboratory has completed the manufacturing research. So Congratulations, we, we made it. So the other ones are still ongoing 
uh, struggling with the resources of course but this one is done so we'll, let's leave it for now and take a look at what we unlocked conveyors that's basically what we got and these conveyor we can we can lay conveyors like this and if we take a look at them in normal speed this is how they look we can split them very easily like that this will split the resources going right and left we can also flip them we can flip entire segments uh, and this will of course merge two tracks instead of splitting them so they're quite easy to use you can also do tunnels if we press t or b we can do other things like this and this and then going off to the sides or just have it up above so let's press b for bridge and it works exactly the same so that's only one thing left to look at and that's the conveyor device the connector so this connector is attached to either a mining uh, mining uh, a mine or to a warehouse so you can have it like this place it next to it like so and it will extract the iron from the warehouse directly and we can flip it the other way around and you can see the color changed and now we're refilling the warehouse so that's how you connect it to to warehouses or, or to mines. So you extract it or you reinsert it. And we also unlocked one more thing, and that is the factory tab where we have, oh, we don't have it yet. So let's finish this, this uh, next research. We need one more lab, I think, because we unlocked. Right. Yes, here we got from manufacturing, we got iron smelting and this will unlock the alloy smelter and iron bar. So let's start that and I will finish that as quickly as I can. So now we are finishing up our other researches. We get the messages up here. We also have the next, the smelting part done in a second. And that's all the research we'll do today. So iron smelting is completed. We have gasoline and I think we have... And this one is coming up as well. But that's all the research we'll do today. You get the idea right now, I hope. So now we can actually build a factory. Our first factory, the alloy smelter. And why should we do that? Well, because we can. Now I will remove this one and this one because i will not need them anymore in this world but now we have three mines here so we have lots of resources what can we do well we can actually start to smell things so that means that we need some put down some uh, smelters Let's see if we can find a good place for them so this should be fine placed here and let's, let's place down four of them. And that's probably good. And you can see we have a question mark. So let's click it and pick a recipe. You will get more recipes when you unlock more things through research, of course. So now we have the smelteries and we need the conveyor belts and we can use the device, the connector over here. So I do this as quickly as I can, so you don't have to wait. It must be green, let's see, here and here. Let's begin with two, that's probably enough. So these will come in from the side. Like so. And so let's make sure we have everything 
in the right way, flip them. So now in the run we get iron going in, in, in. It will be split here and here, but as you can see they are going in the right, correct direction. So we need one more thing, uh, if you remember the recipe is one coal and five iron ore will give you five bars. So that means that we need somehow to get coal here. And we do this with warehouse in this case. I'll place warehouse here and another one here. This one is for coal and this is for the product. And that means that we need our train to get coal here. So let's see if we can add going to the coal mine. Oh, we don't have a coal mine. It's over here. Yeah, I'll take care of that in a bit off cam. Just give me a sec to finish this. So we can have our convertible connector over here again for our coal. And then let's see if I can connect them in a smart way. Okay, how about that? So now we can have coal coming from here and we'll have the product going out on this side and connect. So let's make sure all of them are aiming in the correct direction. So this is the output, 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 and then we have the inputs. So this looks okay. Everything we need now is coal, so let me take care of that. All right, so I just built another train, another route over here, and we have a coal station over here where we can load coal. And this train will go over here and dump it down here. So everything is looking very good, as long as we get coal here, you can now see that we are sending the coal to the factories, to the smelteries in this case. Oops, we do not have all of them. This should be split to the right. And now I think it's correct. So now all of these will start to run and will produce iron, iron ingots, I think they are called. Iron bars, exactly. So this is a core and then you have of course other types of factories. Did we unlock? No, we haven't unlocked any, uh, anyone else, but we have lots of different products to build. Now we have only one thing left to, uh, to take care of because now research is done. We have products coming. We just need to send them to the cities. Uh, I don't have anything unlocked in the ones I've used. You can see this one is getting 120 out of 110. So this is quite satisfied and this is not satisfied. So this town is probably not evolving at all. But we eventually it will we give it all the resources. It will grow in size and you will get more of these. Perhaps you will get iron bar somewhere. And then you take it from here or as we could have done in the research, we can use these bars for steel smelting, uh, diesel engine, uh, manufacturing too, and so on. So iron bars will be required, make lots of them in the beginning. So the final thing to go through is the signal system. As you can see, I have expanded all the rails to a two track system. However, we don't have a two track station yet. So, and how do we make this work? Well, with signals, of course, we need to make sure that these tracks, these trains never collide because that's a very bad thing. 
this is on hold in here so let's not release it at all instead let's talk about the signals as a final detail for this uh, final subject so the signals will make sure that your your trains go in the correct direction there are at this time two different types there's a block signal as you can see here or the pre-signal that we see here you can also call it the chain signal because it will look in a chain ahead and see what's ahead of it but let's start with the block first so placing it like this will make sure that the train should always go this way and not the other way so now if I place it just like this we can make sure that a train entering this block the block starts from these two and goes to the end of the track so this is one block trains will always go to the green here and then go to the red here now it's red because we have one train in the block and the rest of the block is actually the entire track so we can't have that we should split them up well, let's take a few signals like this I think the depot has built-in signals, so it will never leave if there's a train in here. So now you can see this is green, and this is green because there are no the trains in the block, and this is red. So you can split them all out uh, to have more of them here. And you can see the next block here becomes free, and this is green, and this is green. But there's a different type and we'll need the other type as well because the pre-signal will actually look at the, the next block if it can leave the next block. So as you can see this is red and if I place a pre-signal here for example on the exit point this one will tell the train in here that it's only allowed to leave if it's a green signal here. But now it's red, which means that we will never leave the station. In the other cases, it would have, if it's a normal signal, it will, it could leave this and pass this one, but to stop here instead. So it really depends on what you want to do in your, with your system. But I can set this up and demonstrate how it looks when it's working. Okay, so now we have the trains running, we have signals in place, they will, they will run around and do their own business uh, because the signals are correctly installed and they will never crash, hopefully. So here's a good example of the pre-signal that I mentioned, that we have the block signal and the, and, and the pre-signal. This block signal is red because there's a track, there's a train on this track, and this block goes from here all the way up here. But this one is green, so one train is allowed to enter this block. But this one is yellow because we have one red, one yellow, and this means that if, if this train wants to go left, it can go. If it wants to go right, it will stop right here. But now it wants to go left, so everything is fine. So keeping the pre-signals and block signals in, uh, in correct place. Typically, when you exit a place and you want, uh, you have a you have a choice to go right or left, uh, and you might cross and block other trains, then you want to use a pre-signal. Otherwise, block signals will take you quite far. Also, along long distances like this one take it from here to up here I placed one more block signal in the center that means that we can have one train standing here and one train standing here and you can pack them more tightly if you want to but this is red because we have one train going here and it will be red until we have passed that signal and now this coal train wants to go up it could go right it could go left but it will go left and that means that this pre-signal will keep yellow because in this path we have a one track two way all these are two tracks one way so no train will ever be allowed to enter this path 
until it has exited trains can only go from here to here so if you take a look here we can pass on to the right no problems so signals is a big subject i will make probably make another video only for signals and different designs but we can take a look at the basic train uh, a double station design here we have three trains going back and forth i have a two track system uh, and it's a right side traffic so it will always keep on the right side this system will allow always allow two trains to be in the station and the third will be waiting out here. So here again, we have the yellow because we have green here and red here. And in here, we have a red signal in the block signal and these pre-signals will sense this red and show red. If we had, if we had a block signal here, then this is green. I can have blue signal. These both are greens because this block in the center is totally free. But if there's a train here blocking this block, then this will be red and the train will go from here and just stop at this signal and block the entire system. That's why we have to use these pre-signals to prevent that from happening. And with that, I think we have covered all the topics for this video. I hope you could follow along. And as I said, signals is a big subject. I'll probably come back to that, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how to use them and the difference between them and when you need one or the other. If you have any questions, comments, you know where to leave them. Uh, otherwise, I hope I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.